Uh, welcome everybody to this lecture number 10. <clears throat> Till now we have been talking about harmony in human being. We identified human being as coexistence of self and body. <clears throat> then we looked into the difference in needs, activity and response of the self and the body. We identified self as a unit of consciousness and the body as a unit of material. And we said that because human being is coexistence of self and body, the consciousness and the material, its need has to be fulfilled in terms of the activity of consciousness and in terms of the material things, what we call as physical facility. So it has to be ensured in terms of right understanding and right feeling in the self, which is the activity of consciousness and physical facility, which is basically the belongs to the world of material. <coughs> Then we looked into the transaction that is taking place between the self and the body. And we saw that it is self which is playing a significant role or central role in the human being. It is the self who is the seer, the doer, the enjoyer. And in the process, the body is used as an instrument as and when required. Now, in the light of all this, it becomes very natural for us to start looking at this self a little deeper. See what it is. What are the activities of this self? How this self is taking decision? <clears throat> and all those things, you know, <clears throat> and how it is, you know, uh, influencing the body or it is influenced by the body and so on. <clears throat> so when we start looking at ourselves, <clears throat> the most common thing that we can see is our imagination. So this imagination is there. This imagination is going on. And it is going on every moment. So if you look at yourself, you are thinking of something. You are imagining something. You are planning something. All this goes on, right? You are desiring something. So all this goes on. So if we start only observing it, we will be able to see that this imagination is there in each one of us. So I think of making a big house or buying a big car or getting <clears throat> Nobel Prize. So all these things I keep thinking, all these things I keep imagining. So what we have to start So this imagination you will be able to observe. It is anyway going on, right? But if we start paying attention to it, we will be able to see, see what is going on in the imagination. And as I said, it is going on and on every moment. Only thing is that we were not aware of it. Now that we have started it becoming aware of it, we have started paying attention to it. We are able to see that imagination which is going on in each one of us. So whatever you see, you know, whatever you see in the self going on, that is what we are calling as imagination to begin with. <clears throat> some thinking, some planning, some you know, desires, some thought. 
all this is part of imagination so i remember there used to be this serial called mungere lal ke hasin sapne so this person is a pure in the office he is sitting outside the office and then he takes off you know so he has an imagination going on for 28 minutes of course it is very funny at least seems to be funny but this is what we do most of us and last one minute he is again back to this awareness that he is sitting you know pure sitting outside the office so this is what is going on and now we have to start becoming aware of it <clears throat> so i was saying that if we look at this imagination it constitutes of this desire thought and expectation so we have this desire the thought the expectation and all this put together is what we are calling as imagination so each one of us has a desire you know desire to be happy for example then we are trying to work out the details how how we can be happy so that is what is thought and then we are this you know working out what we have to do outside in terms of our behavior in terms of our work so that you know this happiness is ensured so this is what is called as expectation and all this put together is our planning you know all this put together is our imagination so we have to start looking into ourselves and we look into ourselves we see that some imagination is going on so when we try to refine this we can see that this activity of desire this activity of thought this activity of expectation is going on so we can see them you know in a separate activity and all this put together is what is imagination all this put together is what we call as planning so we can see this imagination going on in this self and this is basically this desire thought and expectation put together and if you look at the details of this activity of desire thought and expectation then this is how it would look like yes next <clears throat> so we have this activity of imaging we are trying to make an image right for example i want to make an image of myself as a happy person <clears throat> or a person who is an owner of the house so this imaging this making an image is what is desire what is feeling then <clears throat> i do not stop there i try to work out the details about how this desire is fulfilled how i can become an owner of a house for example right? or i how i can become happy so this desire is about what to be desire has to do with the feeling in the relationship then i am trying to work out the details of how this can be ensured how this can be fulfilled how i can become what i want to be so this detailing is what is called as thought so how to go about ensuring what i want to be or how to have <clears throat> you know how to ensure this fulfillment of the feeling that i have <clears throat> so this detailing is what is called called as thought and then we don't stop here we try to work out the further you know descriptions in terms of what i have to do outside so this what i have to do outside is what is expectation you know and it shows up in terms of the activity of selecting and testing so we have the activity of imaging <clears throat> that 
that is the activity of desire. Then we have the activity of analyzing and comparing, which is the activity of the thought. And then we have this activity of selecting and testing, which is basically the expectation. <clears throat> now, all these activity put together is what we are calling as imagination. So this is how <clears throat> the imagination looks like. But what we are saying here is something which you have to look within and see for yourself. See for yourself that imagination is going on every moment. See for yourself this, this desire, thought and expectation is what is the constitution of this expect <coughs> imagination. And when we say desire, it means activity of imaging. When we say thought, it is activity of analyzing and comparing. And when we say expectation, it is activity of selecting and testing. And desire has to do with what I want to be, my feelings. <clears throat> thought has to do with how I go about becoming what I want to be. And this expectation, this selecting and testing has to do with this, you know, taking, working out how to, <clears throat> what to do outside. You know. <clears throat> so this example we were taking that I want to be an owner of a house. Then I will work out the details of how I can be an owner of the house, how I can make a house, a big house, you know, the house of my liking. So this detailing of how to make a house is what is thought. And then I decide to purchase the land, purchase the land. This is the selection of particular land. Decide for a particular you know, <clears throat> a type of house, particular architecture of the house, particular kind of finish, the color and things like that. This is selecting and testing. So when I'm thinking about the details of how to be an owner of a house, I have so many things, you know, whether to take loan from the bank or, you know, <clears throat> you know, or, or take loan from somebody else and so many things. Then how to construct house, how, what kind of house to be constructed, where to be constructed. Now all these details are part of my thought. Then I specifically I'm doing something outside, right? That is my selecting and testing, my expectation. And all this put together is being an owner of a house. Similarly, if I want to be happy, right, we have so many details that we are talking about for last you know, <clears throat> 15 days, that if we have to be happy, you know, we have to work out this, you know, what happiness is and how this happiness can be ensured. So we said happiness is to be in harmony now we are trying to work out the details, how we can be in harmony. So basically we have to understand the harmony and be in harmony. Now all this detailing we are doing, this is thought. Now, if I think that with, <clears throat> you know, listening to uh, such proposals, you know, and then doing the self-verification within will help me to understand the harmony. So I'm selecting to listen to these proposals. So this is my expectation. And all this put together is what we are calling as imagination. And this imagination keeps going on. So if you look at what we are doing through this 
session is that we are trying to work on our imagination with the basic desire for continuity of happiness so we are trying to propose certain things and when we propose it you decide to listen to it and you are listening to it so that selecting is being done having selected this you know to listen to this proposal you are listening to the proposal and then you are thinking about it you are reflecting on it so basically you are analyzing and comparing with whatever has been your thoughts before and at the end of all this finally you are able to see that yes this is what you desire you desire for continuity of happiness so like that you can see that you have a desire you are working out the details of how to fulfill that desire then you are trying to you know select what has to be done outside in terms of your behavior in terms of your work so all this put together is imagination and this imagination is playing a very central role because it is this imagination which is deciding my behavior deciding my work deciding my participation with the world outside so with this now if you see can we go to the next thing gradually and next no okay so if you look at this <clears throat> so we have this imagination going on in this self and the on the basis of this imagination you know my behavior and work is decided so whatever i perform outside through body is basically decided at the level of this imagination and we can see that this transaction of information that was taking place between the self and the body that we talked about in last session you know we can now see that when the self is deciding something it is at the level of imagination when it has decided it is giving some instruction to the body which is some information and this instruction to the body is expressed in the form of behavior and work so this is the scheme of human being you know what is happening in human being so human being at the level of imagination is deciding what to do what not to do once it will decide that it is giving some instruction to the body the body is doing accordingly and what is done at the level of body is what is seen as behavior with human being or work with rest of nature so when we look at outside we do not see this imagination what we look is the behavior the work at the level of body which is performed by the other person under the guidance of his self and this behavior this work is decided at the level of self at the level of imagination of the self similarly when something is happening outside and the self is you know reading some sensation from the body which is due to the effect of the thing happening outside then it thinks over it it imagines over it and then on the that it decides <clears throat> what to do how to respond or react so let us look at this you know this is very important very important to understand it is one of the major steps that we have to work on so we did work on this in this lecture 10 so in a sense what we found was that this imagination is going on in this self and it is going on in this self every moment and it is basically in terms of these activities activity of desire thought and expectation which is in terms of the activity of imaging activity of analyzing and <clears throat> comparing activity of selecting and testing 
Now, with this background, the next question is that if there is imagination going on, if there is a desire, there is a thought, there is expectation, what is the basis of it? What is the source of it? How is it decided? How is it motivated? So when you, uh, you know, want to make, want to be owner of a big house, if that is your desire, where does it, does it come from? So if you look at that, we will see that a major part of this desire, this imagination, comes from our preconditioning. Comes from our preconditioning. Right. For example, if everybody in the house is saying that you have to come first in the class, right, the parents are saying, then in the school, teachers are saying, friends are saying, now that becomes our desire, you know, that I want to be first in the class. So this preconditioning around, this belief around, right, becomes now a source of my desire. And now I am busy trying to become first in the class. So this is a major source. This is the major source. So if there is a preconditioning around that you must care for your parents, right? then you start thinking in terms of being a person who takes care of the parents. If there is a preconditioning that we should care for our career, the parents are okay, then our desire will be to have a good career. So all this <coughs> desire is decided by, you know, <coughs> preconditioning. So this seems to be a major source. <coughs> this seems to be a major source. So if there is a preconditioning around, there is a belief around in the society that you have to have a, you know, <clears throat> you have to have become a millionaire, then that becomes your desire. Millionaire or trillionaire or the richest man on earth, that becomes your desire. On the other hand, if there is a belief in the society that what matters is not the money but your conduct, then you have a desire to you know, be a man with conduct, you know, human conduct. So this behave, belief in the society which is propagated by the parents, by the teachers, by the society at large, that becomes the basis of our desire. So this is one major source. The other major source is the sensation. The sensation. So if you are going, <coughs> walking by the side of the road and a very shining car passes by with a very high speed, now you happen to like that color, you happen to like that speed, right? And now you want to be the owner of that car. So this is your desire decided by the sensation. Right? You happen to like the size of the house or shape of the house or the color of the house, right? And you want to be owner of that house. So this is something which is decided by the sensation. And if you look at our desire today, most of it is decided either by preconditioning or by sensation. So this you have to work out, you know, you have to prepare a list of your desires, right? And then sort out 
whether they are coming from preconditioning or from sensation. There is also a third possible source and that source is what we have been talking about in last you know, few lectures that we have this natural acceptance within us right? and this is something which is there intact, invariant, uncorrupted right? and I can decide my desire on the basis of this natural acceptance. <clears throat> So if some desire is naturally acceptable to me, I will accept it as my desire. If it is not naturally acceptable to me, I will reject it. So when we were saying, ask yourself, what is naturally acceptable to you? To be in a, you know, with a feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? The answer was feeling of relationship. So now if I have a desire, which has to do with feeling of relationship, I can find out that it is naturally acceptable to me and therefore it is a right desire for me. On the other hand, if there is a desire relating to a feeling of opposition, then I can see that this is something not naturally acceptable and therefore it is not the right desire. So this is the third possibility of deciding the desire and this seems to be the right possibility, right possibility to decide the, uh, my desire. <clears throat> and we can see that if this is the basis of my decision, deciding my desire, then when I have this desire, then my I am in harmony with what is naturally acceptable to me and what I really want to be. And then with this harmony, I am in a state of happiness within. So when this desire comes through this natural acceptance or on the basis of natural acceptance, then I can be sure that with this desire, I will be in a state of harmony within and therefore a state of happiness within. So this third source is something which gives me a guarantee that if I have decided my desire on the basis of my natural acceptance, on the basis of the self-verification that I do on the basis of natural acceptance, then I can be sure that I will be in a state of harmony within and a state of happiness within. On the other hand, if my desire is decided by preconditioning or sensation, then I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this desire is in line with my natural acceptance or not in line with my natural acceptance. So this is what we need to do. So we have a lot of things to do, which each one of us has to do for himself. Number one is to see that in this self, this imagination is going on. Number two, one has to see that this imagination basically constitutes of this activity of desire, thought and expectation, which can be seen in terms of this activity of imaging, analyzing and comparing and selecting and testing together. Then we have to see that this imagination, this desire, you know, this desire is the basis of this imagination. So this base desire is <clears throat> guided or motivated by these three possible sources the preconditioning prevalent in the society or the sensation which I get through the body or our own self-verification on the basis of natural acceptance. And out of this, this third one is what is giving me, you know, the assurance that it will lead to a state of harmony and happiness within. So that will lead to the state of the self-organization, Swatantrata. Otherwise, we are being dictated by from outside in terms of preconditioning or in terms of sensation. So we are more or less like a slave, you know. We are in a state of Patantrata being dictated by outside and not by our own, you know, deciding by our own natural acceptance. So all this we have to see, you know, we have to start seeing. Right? 
<clears throat> so lot of things to do within and each one of us has to work for it and we have to work on it every moment we have to work on it every moment because this imagination is going on every moment this desire thought and expectation is going on every moment so any moment if this desire thought and expectation is not line in line with my natural acceptance it will lead to a state of contradiction and unhappiness within so we have to be aware every moment we have to make sure every moment that my desire is in line with my natural acceptance so that it leads to a state of harmony and happiness within yes so this is the essence of what we have <clears throat> going to look at in lecture 10 <clears throat>